Jesus name we have worship I like you to be very deliberate now as individual God has been faithful from January till now Tuesday. I don't know about you, but I am alive because he kept me. I tell you, sir. He kept me. God kept me. When he kept me so I would let go. February, and this is October. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Oh, blessed be your name forevermore. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And what a joy today is our 63rd birthday as a nation. Listen to me. You may not appreciate the goodness of God over this nation except you go out of this nation. I tell you, God has been faithful. The thing that is that has caused war in other countries are not as serious as what we have gone through. Yes, He kept us together. You know, when I, I was privileged to travel out and I was trying to do some savings and I was checking which is the best economy. And I just clicked the best economy in Africa, Nigeria. I said, Nigeria, okay. This one you are complaining. Sir, God is in this place. I don't know about you. I consider Nigerians as the most intelligent people in the world. If you go anywhere, our thinking is just awesome. It, that's the truth. Hello. That's the truth. I had a South African talking a few days ago this year. He said he came to Nigeria and the only thing he can 
say about Nigeria is chaos. I said, what? Chaos. He said, yes. He said, listen to me, it is not an aberration or something. He said, it's a plus. How can chaos be a plus? He said, Nigerians are the only people that can survive in the midst of chaos and look like peace. So also. So where it's difficult for others to trend, Nigeria will trend well. Because of what we are going through. Whether you like it or not, God has been faithful. We have enjoyed peace. We have enjoyed progress since, the, since independence. Lift up your hands to heaven and say, Father, we thank you for keeping this nation for the peace we have enjoyed. Somebody give him glory. Give him praise. Bless his name. Lord, we are grateful for this great nation. We know you have a purpose for us. That's why the enemy is fighting. But we know your faithfulness and your love will bail us through. Thank you, Lord, for peace, for progress. You know, the sector is independent. You have not allowed us to go into war. You have not allowed the nation to go into chaos. So you alone be the glory. You have deposited great blessing in the land. We celebrate you, Lord. Thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Lord, thank you for this nation. We are grateful you, brought, you put us in this nation. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the progress. Thank you for the unity. To you will be the glory. Thank you for where you have taken us from. And thank you for where you are taking us to. Nigeria shall be great again. To your glory and to your praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In this service, speak a word to us again. That word that we establish everyone's testimony in this last quarter of the year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, interpret your word the way you normally do. Thank you, Lord. Let everyone leave this service fruitful. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody excited. God is in this place. I put those hands together for the Lord. Please, you may be seated, everyone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. On the behalf of Jesus Christ, the owner of this church, and God's servant, Bishop David Oyedipo, the apostle over this commission, I'd like to especially welcome everyone to this covenant day of fruitfulness. And whether the devil like it or not, you shall be fruitful. Amen. From this service, you shall be fruitful. Amen. Everything around you shall be fruitful. Amen. Barrenness shall be terminated Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So shall it be. Therefore, you know, you came with a part of contact for things God, you want to be fruitful in your life. Just bring them around. If you came to this service without an expectation, you will go home disappointed. Write down your expectation. What exactly do you want God to do for you this month? And we're going to be praying over those requests very shortly. He said, we have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So you have come unto God, the judge of all. To the innumerable company of angels, to the spirit of just men made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh what? Better thing. Whatever you write as a request, before this month is over, the hand of God will turn it into a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. For with God, all things are possible. God is giving you a miracle. In Jesus' precious name. The theme of this month is, I will not leave you helpless. Amen? Tell your neighbor, I will not leave you helpless. That is God giving us an assurance in the Holy Ghost. And the focus is the Holy Spirit. We're going to be exploring the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The workings of the Holy Spirit this month. Therefore, our anchor scripture is John chapter 14, verse 16 to verse 18. I will pray the Father. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, or the line the word, the world cannot receive. Because it seared him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. 
We want to be looking at this. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. We want to be looking at the works of the Holy Spirit. How he will not leave us what? Helpless. That's an assurance for somebody. I release divine help to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our teaching series on Sunday is understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is part 1B. Understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I, I must say here, one of the greatest teachings, things to explain, is the Holy Spirit. The reason is simple. No man can understand God. He said there is no searching of his understanding. <laughs> so when it comes to the teaching of the Holy Spirit, it's always very complex. That is why the only thing many people know about the Holy Spirit is power. Others know him as falling down. In the other side. Others know him as a dove that flies. So when you are watching some of these movies and they just show a dove, the Holy Spirit has come. Who said the Pentecostal majorly, majorly knows him as speaking in tongues. Incidentally, these are just the manifestation. The fact that the leaves are moving, the leaves are not the wind. They are just the effect of the wind. So all the things I've just narrated now are just what? The effects of the manifestation of what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actually God. Hello. And let me tell you one thing about the Holy Spirit that will excite you. The Holy Spirit is actually giving to the believer never, be, never to be stranded in any circumstance. So, listen to me. As a believer, you have an advantage that your believers don't have. It is called the Holy Ghost. So, it's not just power. We think it's power because, um, you know, if you read the book of Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, this is where people think it's just power. And the spirit of the Lord, that is power, shall rest upon him. The spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and what? And of the fear of the Lord. Now, what is being explained here are what is called the multifaceted dimension of the Holy Ghost. The different area of his operations. He has power. He gives wisdom. He gives understanding. He enables us to walk in the fear of God. He gives counsel and might. They are just the different dimension. If you read the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 6, they call them the seven spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now if you match Revelation chapter 5 verse 6 and Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, it simply means that the Holy Spirit is the embodiment of God. The completeness of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He has multifaceted dimension. And that is what is responsible for what I call different graces. Which means, if he's having multifaceted dimension, it means he is the spirit of all grace. What do I call it? That's what the all grace. Oh, you don't understand that. Let me explain quickly. You understand. When I say he's the spirit of all grace, simply mean he is the spirit that impacts all grace. In Zechariah chapter, is it 10, 12, or 12, 10? Say, so will pour upon us the spirit of grace and what? Supplication. So there's a spirit of what? Grace. He is a, he impacts us with all grace. <laughs> Pastor, what do you mean when you say you impact us with all grace? Now, what is grace? So you understand how powerful the Holy Ghost is. What is grace? 
Grace simply means what? Divine ability. When I am saying divine ability, it simply means having ability beyond humans. Listen to this. I preached a message one day. I said, the most frustrating thing that can happen to anybody is to try to copy what a man is doing by grace. Mm. Man, I will tell you why. You know why? Even if you are a PhD order in marketing. You can still be a failure selling pure water. Exactly. Hello. Uh, but listen to me. I have never gone to school of business. I have never done marketing when I am engraved by the Holy Ghost. I can sell anything and it will sell. What? Divine ability. That is, I am able to do what naturally others cannot do. And listen to me, it is the Holy Ghost that enables you to do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Divine engracement. That's why Paul speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. Very powerful. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, Paul is saying, by, but by the grace of God, I am what? Now, now look at that scripture very well. That is, I am not anything. Whatever you see in me is grace. But by the grace of God, I am what? What I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they are. Yet, not I, but the grace. Holy Spirit, give us understanding. Amen. Now, what Paul is saying here is, is that I am not self-made. I am not education-made. I am not intellectually made. I am what I am because it was given to me. By who? By the Holy Ghost. He said what? There are principles for success. There are principles for prosperity. He said, it was this same grace that enabled me to fulfill the principle. Therefore, without grace, you will be disgraced. Helpless. So you need grace. And if you need grace, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of all grace. Sir, you will never be able to maximize your Christian life if all you know about the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. <laughs> you will be limited. In fact, you can, you can be speaking in tongues and be a failure. I hope you know that. Absolutely so. But when you know the Holy Ghost as a God of grace, for example, when I am going to, maybe for an interview, I say, Holy Spirit, go with me. What happened? You will answer questions you didn't study. That's what the divine ability. Why? Because there is something given to you beyond what is beyond your mind. How do you know what you have not studied except something by anyhow make you to know it? That is why here, ladies and gentlemen, you need the Holy Ghost. In case you are not baptizing the Holy Ghost, pray for it. Stop limiting the Holy Ghost to tongues. He imparts us with what? All kinds of grace. Anything. Now, when we read, he is a spirit of what? Wisdom. He is a spirit of power. He is a spirit of what? Understanding. Huh? So, so why are you behaving like a dummy at work? In school. Amen. Amen. He is the spirit of revelation. The spirit of faith. Anywhere you see spirit of, is the Holy Ghost at work. The spirit of faith, the Holy Ghost. Which means, when he impacts you with grace for faith, we call it the spirit of faith. When he impacts you with grace for knowledge, we call him the spirit of knowledge. When he imparts you with uh, the fear of God, you know, you see sin, like Joseph, 
And you say, no, I will not commit this sin. It's not because you are able. It's because grace helps you. It's called the spirit of the fear of God. I tell people something. When people sin, please pray for them. Pity them. It's not because they want to sin. It's because grace is absent. Can I tell you why you are not committing sin? It's not because I, I attend Winners Chapel. Who told people Winners Chapel is not committing sin? It's grace. That's what is grace. What is that grace? The spirit of the fear of God. When you lack that grace from the Holy Ghost of the fear of God, you will steal and come and share testimony. Unfortunately, you won't tell us the second part. Amen, somebody. So you need the Holy Ghost. Now, let me just say this before we continue. You are created for dominion. But whether you will manifest dominion or not is a function of knowledge. True or false? Can I tell you something? He is the spirit of knowledge. So, the reason why you are defeated is not because the devil is strong. It's because you have not been engraced with the spirit of knowledge. That is why, in another dimension, we want to zero in this service on what I call the spirit of revelation. What do I call it? Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 17 and verse 18, very powerful. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and verse 18. Church, can we read together one, two, go? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Why? So that you will know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches, glory of his inheritance. Huh? I wish I had more time to explain this scripture. Mm. The God, uh, uh, Paul was commending the Ephesians church from verse 1. Their faith. They are exploits. And he said, I have one prayer point for you. That God will give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom. And the spirit of what? Revelation. What will the spirit of revelation do? It will enable you to know God, number one. Verse 18, it will show you how rich his glory is and what is packaged, the inheritance, in your redemption. He will open your eyes to it. Sir, if you know what God packaged in your redemption, you will never be where you are now. It's because you don't know. You are blind. That is why I said that the eyes of your understanding. They what? Enlightened. Open. What is this spirit of revelation? The spirit of revelation here talks about the Holy Ghost Opening your eyes to see the secret of what God says that gives you victory over circumstances. What is the spirit of revelation? It is the Holy Ghost opening your eyes to see the secret of what God is talking to, saying to you so that you can triumph, so that you can overcome. It's also called light. If your eyes are not open, there's no revelation. It is called darkness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. It's called darkness, 22 and 23. Now the Bible says, the Holy Ghost will not make you to be blind. It will open your eyes. <laughs> Amen. When your eyes are open, you are able to see. It's called understanding. It is called revelation. Sometimes we call it light. Here it is. You are defeated or triumphant by the amount of light you have. Your position on earth is revelation what? Determined. Hear me, sir. There is nothing in the devil. It is your understanding that defines his placement. There is nothing in the devil. 
it is your understanding that defines his placement in your life. Because what you are running from mountain to mountain for, some people put their hands in their pocket and walk through it as if it never existed. And yes, Satan is looking at them, can't do nothing. Why? Light. Revelation. John chapter 1, verse 5. From verse 4 to verse 5. John chapter 1 from verse 4, verse 5. Verse 4, please. Thank you. In him was life, and the life was what? The light of man. Let's read verse 5 together. One to go. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended him not. Listen to this. The dominion of light over darkness is not contestable. Have you ever seen where you put on lights? Darkness, say, I won't go. What do you so see? I won't go because you have not fasted three days and night. You switch off the lights in your room. Darkness, say, if you like, switch it on. I'm not moving anywhere. Has it ever happened? Hear me, sir. When you have light, not enough knowledge, the devil cannot stop your life. You are stopped because you lack light. It's not because the devil is strong. Sir, I don't consider the devil as a problem to man. The problem of man is ignorance. It's not the devil, sir. Can I tell you something? How many of you know the weakness of darkness? Light. No matter how checkered the light is, the darkness will flee. True or false? That is, no matter the thickness of the darkness, introduce chakra light. Darkness dissipates. Are you with me now? Therefore, the weakness of the devil is the light in you. So Satan has weakness. What is that weakness? What you know. What you know paralyzes the devil. Hey! Sir, go for light. No more about God. No more about what he says. No more about what he says about you. And Satan will flee. There will be no contention, sir. Can I tell you something? You will never be relevant without revelation. Knowledge is what gives you credence. Look, okay, let's look at this scripture. I'm trying to show you why you need the Holy Ghost. Why he must give you the spirit of what? Revelation. There is no mountain anywhere. Your mountain is your ignorance. No mountain. One of the things that upset me a lot is when you begin to blame your grandmother, blame your stepmother, blame your uncle in the village. Introduce light. The power of your uncle will be paralyzed. Introduce light. Your grandmother will have no say. What you know is your victory ticket on earth. What you know. Many of us are too lazy about knowledge. No more. No more. <laughs> and Satan will run. Hear me, sir. Light is the weakness of the devil. Revelation. Look at scripture. Isaiah chapter 60. From verse 1 to verse 3. What did he say? Arise. Shine. For what? And the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon you. Hear this. Studio, give me, leave it there. Leave it to verse 1. He said, arise, shine. For what? The your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen. You know what that means? If you don't have light, you will frustrate his glory. It is light that makes the glory to come upon you. What is glory? Honor. The honor you are looking for is tied to the light you have. Verse 2. Thank you, studio. Verse 2. For what? Look at verse 2. Can we read together? Want to go? For behold, what? The darkness shall cover the earth. That's where we are now. And what? Gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. What is the Lord? When the Holy Ghost breathes upon you and begin to reveal knowledge to you, they will see your glory. They will see your relevance. They will see what you carry. And verse 3, finally, give me verse 3 very quickly. And the Gentiles shall come what? Holy. No, no, no. I thought Gentiles will come to you. Where are they coming? Where are they coming? So if you have no light, will they come? 
Stop blaming people for not helping you. You don't have life. If you are not relevant, you don't have life. The Gentiles will only come because they see the light in you. The Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to what? The brightness. Not you. What makes you relevant is revelation. That's what the Holy Ghost gives. Unfortunately for me and you, everything I'm saying now, you have the Holy Ghost, yet you are irrelevant. Engage the spirit of revelation. Say, Lord, show me what to do from scriptures that will make my glory appear. Show me what? What to do. Show me. Show me what to do. Open my eyes. I love what the assistant pastor said in the first service. He said, revelation simply means what you see from what he says. Not what you hear. What you see from what he says. It is actually what you see from scripture that brings glory to your life. Not what you hear. What you see from what he says. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will what? Uh -uh. He didn't say here. I will watch to what? See what what? He says unto me and what I shall answer when I am confronted. Tell somebody light. Tell somebody light. Before you bind the devil, go for light. If you like, bind the devil from here to tomorrow. If you have no knowledge, you won't go. He will just tell you, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Pastor Ben I know. And then, listen, listen, he will now ask you, who are you? You say, eh, I am Janet. Ah, we don't know that name in heaven. What we know is the light you carry. It is the light that dissipates darkness. If you want darkness to respect you, go for light. And the Holy Ghost is what gives you this understanding and revelation. Hear me, sir, you cannot get it with your human intellect. No. And we have the Holy Ghost as a gift. What are you looking for? The Holy Ghost has the ability. So you have it. I love what the Bible says. When Jesus Christ was introducing the Holy Ghost, John chapter 14, you see from verse uh, 16 to verse 18, where we read. If you go to verse 26, uh, give me the amplified version, if you still, if you are there. John 16, thank you. 26, John 14, 26, the amplified version. Now, if you read it from the amplified version, look, I said, but what? The comforter. What is his work? Counselor. What is the meaning of counselor? He will give you advice. Are you confused? The advisor, who is the Holy Ghost, is with you. You cannot be confused. He is what? Helper. Tell somebody helper. What is the meaning of helper? When you, got, when you get to your wit end, everything is ready. He is there to assist you. He is your assistant. Why are you running as if you have no assistant? What are you looking for? He has it. Your helper, the intercessor. When you are weak in prayer, he is interceding for you. He is your what? Advocate. That's the one I like. You can kill anybody for me. That's it. You know the meaning of advocate? He defend my cause and justify me. And you don't get it. He defend my cause and justify me. Hear me. Sometimes you make terrible mistakes. And Satan said, kill him. The wages of sin is death. The advocate stepped in and said, God, the Father, who is the judge of all, he said, God, wait, I'm his advocate. He said, and then what? Jesus died his death. Paid his price on the cross. If Jesus paid his price, it means Jesus carried away this sin. Okay, if Jesus carried this sin, what happened? The righteousness of Jesus become his own. So he cannot die. Advocate. Advocate. 
So when Satan comes to you with heavy guilt of the sin you committed, 1942, tell Satan, shut up. I have an advocate who have interceded for me already. He's called the Holy Ghost. I tell you, they are all there. He's the one who threatens you when you are weak. Can you see? Where's the next assignment there? Stand by. In the dark, he's there. Where no man is, hey, nobody is here, I'm alone. He said, you are not alone, I'm stand by. I decree today, you will no longer be stranded in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. These are the things the Holy Ghost wants to give you. If you subscribe to it. Well, these are all the teachings you are going to be hearing this month anyway. Listen to this. Why do you fail when the person who told the examiner what to say is standing by you? You don't know. Can you see that now? Stand by. The one who told the lecturer the exam to set, after the lecturer said the exam, he come to you as you entered the exam hall, he stood by you. He said, anything you don't want to ask me. You you the who entered the exam hall, you want to copy and cheat. You need to cheat. The one who said the question, he said, ask me anything I will tell you. You shall teach all these things. Oh. Not only Bible, they can teach chemistry. You mean somebody? Are you around the same now? Tell somebody you need the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. We are living in a wicked world. Satan is the God of this world. And God knows that with Satan on earth, yeah, you cannot survive. So when Jesus was going, he said, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I'm going to send. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to me. It's not just I'm going to send the comfort. If I tell you what the Holy Ghost is from the scripture we read before, is that He's the fullness of God embodiment. He will be with you. He will be with you. So that no matter the danger, no matter the evil, I will be with you. And who is that with you? The Holy Spirit. He is the executor of what is written. He executes what is written. Amen, somebody. But let me round up with this and we'll look at truthfulness quickly because of our time. Oh, praise God. If you are not born again, you cannot receive him. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is not given to everybody. It's only given to who? The redeemed. John 14, okay, 16, 17, but verse 17, our emphasis. You must be born again. John 14, 16, and verse 17. If you read verse 17, it says, He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So even the spirit of truth, whom what? The world cannot receive because they see him not. They don't know him. That's why when you are speaking in tongues, it's stupidity to the person who is not saved. He said they are just talking, 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 and then, la, 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 la. What is that? Just bad, no, nonsense. Yet it is nonsense to them according to First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to verse 14. Especially verse 13, verse 14. If you read verse 14, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, For the natural man understandeth not the things of God. Can you see that? But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. So you can't receive revelation. For they are what? Foolishness, nonsense. Something. All these Christians, they are behaving stupidly. It is because they don't understand it. Neither can they know. So stop trying to convince a man that does not have the Holy Spirit about the things of God. It will frustrate you. They can never understand it. How do you explain tithe to a non-believer? Whose income cannot take care of his expenses? You now say remove 10% and give God, then it will multiply. You say, cheating. Pastor wants to eat your money. It, sir, it's not because they hate the pastor or the church. The natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. For they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually. They ask. You cannot use spiritual formula and you want to give it to a carnal mind to use. He will be lost. You need to be born again. If you are not saved, you cannot receive the Spirit of God. If you try to speak in tongues without being saved, it's fake. Fake. Number two, whatever it tells you to do, 
do it. Do it. When God tells you a thing or show you a thing, and you don't take step, he will keep quiet next time. He won't reveal anything to you. So it is what you do with his last revelation that will determine whether he will give you another one. So whatever he tells you to do, we are in our 11th hour operation, 11th hour change of story. This change of story must answer in your life. Amen. Therefore, hear me, church. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. Fear not, do it. Let's round up covenant day of fruitfulness. We're going to pray in a moment. Amen, somebody. It's our covenant day of what? Fruitfulness. From this day, everything about your life shall be fruitful. Yeah. I have said over and over again, the word fruitfulness is not limited only to bringing forth children. It's part of it, but it's not limited. That is not all it is. The fruit of the womb is just one aspect of fruitfulness. As a matter of fact, the word fruitfulness means what? Productivity. Productivity. So if you are not productive, you are barren. You can open a business, it's not productive, it's not yielding value. It's barrenness. Yesterday I was studying and the Holy Ghost gave me another definition of fruitfulness. He said fruitfulness simply means value adding. When values are not added, you are barren. I went to the dictionary to search it and I discovered that another synonym to productivity is actually value. Value. I'm going somewhere because we're going to pray. For example, I went to school. I graduated maybe with a 2-1. First class upper. Second class upper, please. And here am I. No job. If I may be engineering, no job. What happened? My certificate is not adding value to my life. True or false? So we can say that that certificate is what? Barren. Beginning from today, that certificate shall be fruitful. It's value adding. You open a factory hoping that, you know, you make sense, you will be there, and then nothing is happening. Value, you are not adding value. You have spent money, but no value. What means that company is what? Barren. Today, I decree it shall be fruitful. Yeah. It's productivity, it is value adding. It is expected that when you get, get married, that something should be added as in people. That is why they call it fruitful. I'm going to pray, therefore. Whatever is making me not to be fruitful, Lord, kill it. Lord, destroy it. Now, you know why we're going to pray that prayer? I was maintaining for this service, and God said, there are things that want to make me a lie before God's people. He said, destroy them. Because Genesis chapter 1, Verse 28, 26 and 28. The purpose of your creation is fruitfulness. Now, let me shock you. Let me shock you. Oh, let me shock you with something. Do you know that God hates barrenness or fruitlessness? God relates with us according to the level of fruit we bear. Your productivity makes God happy. Not idleness or nothing is working. Anytime there is no productivity, check if God is angry. That is, I didn't create you to be fruitless. Mark chapter 11. This seven to nine. When Jesus approached the fig tree, having leaves, what happened? The Bible says supposedly that he will find fruit in it. And when he got there, he didn't find fruit. He, he saw only leaves. What, they, what happened? That is how much God is angry with fruitlessness. Anything that has make you barren, I release the vengeance of God upon them today. Yeah. Oh. It was supposed to be. And in Luke chapter 13, I think from 6 to 9, the same thing. Jesus Christ said, a, 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 a farm owner 
own in farm. And then he came, supposed to find fruit. And he, he said, cut it down. What a cover it the ground. God is angry. Let me pause. If there's anybody here, your hands are fruitless. Go and do something. Now say, Pastor, there is no job. Go and create a job. The fruit of the hand. Do something with your life. Cut it down. He said, Company the ground. He said, No, Pastor, I'm not a company the ground. He said, I don't have job. Create one. God has given you a creative mind. That is why he said, Ye are God. The word ye are God means you have the ability to create the way I created. Create it. Create it. And the, 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 the vine comes and says, Oh, leave it. Let me dig around it. Give it all it takes. After next year, you come back, no fruit, cut it down. Say, I agree. What did he say? John chapter 15, verse 2. The same thing. He said, The branch that beareth not fruit, I will cut it away. The one that beareth fruit, I will prove. Beloved, fruitfulness incites God. Barrenness is a curse. It's a curse. But I have good news for somebody. That curse is ending right now. I said it's ending right now. One of the strongest instruments to destroy, hear this, barrenness is joy. That's what is joy. Singing. What did he say? Sing, O barren. And that's Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1. He didn't say complain. He said what? Tell somebody sing. But do you know what most people that are barren do? They are full of bitterness and complaint and murmuring. So their barrenness becomes worse. Sing, O oh barren. Thou that has not there, break forth. It's like scream. I, say, I can never be barren. Cry aloud. That has not traveled with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Say the Lord. Sing, O oh barren. So, John is the caterpillar that bulldozes barrenness. John. That is why, if you check many women that have no children, Satan will always make them sad. Depressed. Thinking. God, what else will I do? Sanctuary keeper, I join. Seed, I have sown. All the men of God in Benue State, I have gone to them. But by God, what else? Hmm? My mother-in-law. Oh God. As she is crying, she is fortifying the barrenness without knowing. And the Bible says, Hey! Sing. That is, you go and do test medical things. They say, you think you are pregnant. And by the time you do the test, come on. One check her sleep. Uh, uh, pregnancy. Negative. From that time, the person that walked like this to the hospital will be coming back like this. Ah, it is well. I hope you are not sick. I am not sick. Even the voice shows it. <laughs> but the Bible made us understand in 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 18 to verse 20. And talking about Hannah, when her countenance was no more sad, she brought forth. When her countenance what? Was no more sad. I want to give somebody joy. Stop complaining about situation. Rejoice that you are alive. Stop complaining. If you can kill complain, you will move forward in life. If you can kill memory, you will jump any opposition. Stop complaining. Start singing. And then you will be fruitful. Rise to your feet. Sing, O oh, you Sing, you that did not bear. And you will come forth with a 